Just do it. Let's do do it. you have a message that you'd like to get out to the world? Maybe you don't know how to do it. Well, perhaps art is the way because we have an amazing guest here who's going to share some of the ways he's getting his message out to the world. Hey, everybody, welcome to Voluntary Living with me, David James Rodriguez. We're building a world based on consent, self-ownership, and freedom. And I am so excited to be with our guest today because I would consider him a, a luminary and a, one of the most important artists on the planet. I know those are big words, but um, let me just read you some short bio uh, before we get into the the, the content here. Um, Grant Present Elman is a multi-instrumentalist, vocalist, and producer from Sedona, Arizona. His 2021 Truth Bomb calling out the scam of COVID-19 and government was censored from Spotify within a week of release. And he has amazing songs, anthems, in fact, um, playing on the stages of Anarchapoco, The Greater Reset, Conscious Life Expo. And in 2024, he'll be on the main stage at Rise and Vibes with a legendary lineup like Steel Pulse, Tribal C, J Boog, and a lot of other people. And his latest release, Sing and Pray, calls for peace in Gaza and shows, illuminates the erroneous belief in authority is the root cause of every war and genocide in history. So an amazing bio, as you can see. Grand brother, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Dave. It's an honor to be here with you. And yeah, just grateful we've connected on this path as brothers and freedom minded connections. And it's just, it's been great to get to know you more over the last couple of years. And I'm mm. just excited to be here today and, and to share some, some thoughts with your audience. Yeah, totally, man. And the audience hasn't listened to his his amazing tracks. I listen to it on YouTube. Other people might listen to other places. Um, but one of my favorites, Grant, is uh, Freedom is Ours for the Taking, History in the Making. And um, that's, I mean, one of the anthems that I love because people need to realize where we, at, where we are in human history. And everything's up for grabs right now. You know, the financial system, the school system, medical system, all these old, ancient control mechanisms which these dudes have been controlling for a long time they're going down they're, they're they've lost control of the information they've lost control of the consciousness and uh it's time to take it back and i think that's one of the great songs and uh, amongst many that you've created uh, to help raise some of the consciousness um but um i first i think heard that song in 2017 at the jackalope freedom festival and uh, we're out there having a good time with the bonfire and you were jamming that. And I was like, well, I don't know what that song is, but um, I ended up getting the name of it. And I was like, dude, this thing is amazing. Um, so maybe you want to share, I gave the the short bio there, but um, you want to share a little bit um, maybe with the audience what your dreams are and visions or intentions as an artist, because my small grasp of artistry with comedy, because I'm now I'm delving into some comedy stuff yeah. and uh, learning some of these things. Like art is the transcendent tool. So if you have a message to get out there, you're getting your message out there. So what would you want to maybe just start with as being an artist? And it seems like um, you were first of all you're highly talented. And it seems that might have come from a young age. But when did you start to realize that you are an artist and that you have a message and you have some talents and and gifts to to get out to the world? Um, when did that all begin? Yeah, thanks. So I have been playing music my whole entire life and started off really young playing classical piano. And then I started playing in rock bands when I was a little older, like nine, 10 years old, played guitar and then got behind the drum kit because my band didn't have a drummer and I just kind of figured it out. And then that has turned into basically my primary instrument now is the drum kit and, and now vocals as well. But it wasn't until, you know, COVID really that I started to actually speak my voice through music. I was, but prior to that, I was producing a lot of other artists and I was using my, my skills and my production abilities to, you know, create records and help other artists get their voice out there. And then when COVID happened, I kind of found myself in a situation where I just felt that I had to speak the truth. And my voice hadn't really been used a lot and I just slowly started to exercise my voice more and more. And through that process, I began to create some, some freedom songs and songs like ours for the taking, like you said, and mm. scam and some of those other songs that I, I, they felt like they wrote themselves. Honestly, I don't really feel like I even wrote them. I was just 
kind of pissed off, didn't really know what to do. And right. one of my, I would say one of my mentors, Mark Passio, who I'll probably talk about quite a bit in this interview, sure. he was just saying, you know, his delivery style of serving the truth is very intense and harsh for a lot of people. And he says that people are always telling him, you need to just tone it down a little bit and you'll reach way more people. And he's like, well, I don't want to tone it down. Get as offended as you like. That's what he always says. Get as offended as you like. And I'm not here to reach the masses. I'm here to inspire other teachers to reach the masses because the more teachers we have, the better. And I feel like now I would say I'm in, in a similar position as I'm working on trying to reach as many people as possible through the music and knowing, like you said, that music and art in general is the highest form of alchemy of our own personal process, our own healing process, and then the healing process of the world through, mm. through that osmosis. So that's a little bit about how I got, got creating this freedom music. And now my, my mission is to just serve as much freedom music as possible and, and create really radio quality records and radio level, top level productions and top level live performances and shows so that mm. there's no reason why this can't reach a massive audience. You know, I, I have mm -hmm. dreams of playing Red Rocks. I have dreams of selling out giant, giant venues and speaking yes. this freedom message to huge stadiums full of people. So I'm not going to stop until that happens. And even if it doesn't happen, I'm still not going to stop. So whatever yes. happens, happens. It's God's fate. But I feel that that is what I'm here to do is to use the high vibrational frequency of music that opens people's hearts so that the mind can be more receptive to receiving messages of truth. Because we all know in the freedom movement that when you try to just truth, 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 and just be telling people the truth, a lot of times people don't want to hear it. They get defensive yeah. and they start to close down because it's just difficult to receive truth when it's not coming from a higher frequency. And I think music is one of those tools that allows us to transmit the truth through a higher frequency and so that it can be more palatable for the masses. And mm -hmm. so that's what myself, my friends like Elias Clay and other freedom artists, Illuminati Congo, who we're all down at Greater Reset, that's what we're all working on. And so yeah. it's exciting to see where that's going. Yeah, well, yeah, I was down there too, and that concert was amazing, and uh, a bunch of other amazing artists down there too. And it's very hopeful to see that the artists are getting the messages out as well, because uh, I agree with you. Like, the we have the logical framework on the left side of our brain, like government's illegitimate, coercion's wrong. We got that, but now it's like, okay, now how are we going to get this out there for the people? And I mentioned the Bob Marley documentary um, or the film that came out. And I watched another documentary, which was called Rebel Music. And he, you probably know his story better than I do. But he came from the, the ghetto in Jamaica and he rose to international stardom. And one of his great quotes that I love, he says, I will single handedly fight the war with my music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like he knew what he was doing. And he's like. If I use violence, then whose problem am I solving? And that's my conclusion, too. And it's kind of a, a non-aggression, peaceful approach of Gandhi or Martin Luther King. But them dudes were were moving the, the masses. You know, in, in Gandhi's case, hundreds of millions of people, non-compliance, non-cooperation. And I think that's what it's going to take. And um, to see the artists down there in Morelia, Mexico, um, at that that concert, I'm like, okay, dude, this is amazing. And uh, to see you start to rise is is very exciting too, because uh, so many tracks that you're putting out, and um, you know, you're I believe you're writing, you're producing, you're video recording and editing and doing all that yourself. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, that's correct. I do all of it myself because I just I don't really have the budget to pay you know all these people to do all these different things. So I've just worked over the years at accumulating and you know refining as many skills as possible so that I can be as self-sufficient in my creative process as I can. Mm -hmm. And that a lot enables me to get more work done and put more music out there, which I'm, which I'm working on constantly is just upping that prolific creativity as much as possible. So, right. And you, and you have more artistic freedom, right? You don't have a label or a producer trying to tell you or, or, or direct you somewhere. You have freedom of expression um, to follow where the spirit or the, you know, the higher self takes you. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that I noticed when I was, I was getting a degree in music industry from University of Southern California when I was, you know, I was in this, uh, <laughs> this mindset back 
graduating high school, I went through the whole school system and, you know, we could probably talk much more in depth or even do a whole podcast on the school system, which we yeah. were both on the same page about that. But yeah. I was coerced by, by family members into attending a four-year university. So naturally with my, my inclination towards music, I decided to study music industry and production. And it was, it was somewhat valuable. I wouldn't say it was worth a quarter of a million dollars. I would have rather bought a house for that amount of money, but yeah. um, it was, it was somewhat valuable. And then graduating from there and seeing that the kind of the dark underbelly of the music industry and how a lot of my friends got sucked, you know, very talented musicians. A lot of them just got sucked into essentially making music for the machine, which in my mm. opinion is pushing a message of communism, pushing a message of, you know, all of the leftist woke culture heavily and all of these kind of um, perverted, distorted messages that the, the music industry in Hollywood and the establishment wants to push Mm. because they have a monopoly on the vast majority of the commercialized art that's being created. And mm -hmm. so at that time, I just realized, I was like, you know, this isn't, this isn't for me. I'm going to have to figure out another way that I can earn money so that I can focus on doing music that's authentic to myself mm -hmm. and not having to compromise my integrity in order to get the message out there or, or to, you know, be successful in music, whatever that means. So mm. it is also encouraging to see that nowadays with the rise of the independent media, there are a lot of freedom sovereign artists who are not yeah. compromising their message and they're able to do it independently. And it's mm. just about striking that balance between finding a team of people who can help you, you know, booking agents and people who can help get the music out there while still not kowtowing to some label that wants to take, you know, the labels now they do 360 degree uh, contracts, which basically means that they, they create all these different income streams for you and then they siphon off a, a vast majority of, of all of those income streams. They control all of your income streams. Mm. Whereas, you know, a lot of artists like, you know, Jimmy Levy and uh, Congo and there's a lot of people out there, Free Soul, lots of great artists now who are doing the DIY approach and figuring out how to make it work. And, you know, it's really inspiring to see that it is possible to spread a message of integrity and still be able to get it out there in a big way. And I think that's becoming more and more possible. Also with the, uh, with the rise of NFTs and stuff like that, where people can be paid for their work in a, in a real way and not have, that, not have any of those payments be, you know, over the table, so to speak. That's yeah. pretty cool to see. And I just think that there's a lot of exciting potential for creatives in this time period where we don't have to be at the mercy of the slavery systems that have been holding humanity down for such a long time. That's right. Yeah, the monopoly is the media and these dudes. Um, I mean, rightfully so. I mean, w even though part of the them are psychopathic, I would say part of them are just opportunists, you know, and uh, maybe crony capitalists that just, hey, let's just make a lot of money. Who cares about these people? Kind of uh, their Darwinian type of thinking. And what's rising, it seems to me, is the humanity of the human family. You know, like uh, as a man growing up, I didn't hear too much love expression in my household from other men. Like I heard it from my mom, but not so much from my dad, you know, and I'm half Mexican. So there's kind of that, you know, um, like eh, tough guy type thing, yeah. you know. Um, and then as I got older, I started to realize like I I I feel love, I want to express love, but I want to be like gay or effeminate or something. And I found out the uh, Greek have eight types of love, and one of them is agape love, and that's the love of humanity. So that's not like I love you, or, you know, romantically or or like a blood relative, but like just the humanity. And so that helped me with my expression of love to gen genuinely express love for people. And these guys, I think, are absent of that and or have scarcity mindset or something. So this type of um, conversation of like we're all one family is starting to really rise, brothers and sisters. And we don't even have to like each other, you know, but it's like we respect each other. We respect your humanity. You're a soul. Everyone listen to this. You're significant. You know, your consciousness and your beingness is very powerful and um, it actually rolls into the next question about being present and your name, Presence. I love that. Um, you want to share how you came up with that name? Because I thought that was a, a beautiful story and there's some great uh, meaning behind that. Yeah, definitely. I came up with that name when I was several years ago. It was back in 
2017 or 2016 when I was studying a lot of Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, and he talks a lot about the generous present moment where in the, the generous present moment, everything is abundant. You know, the, the presence mm. gives you everything that you need and blesses you with everything that you need. And over time, I realized that the process of creating music is all about that. It's all about presence because when you are fully in the present moment, then you become tapped into something higher than the ego self. You become tapped into the all self or the God self or, or the, one, the one source of consciousness, whatever you want to call it. There's many words for it, but I think that that's where the, the genius music can really come through. And the, not just for music, but the genius of every creative person. And when you were saying a minute ago, you know, we're all here for some kind of purpose, I, I would agree 100%. I think that the best, one of the best things we can do right now for the love of humanity, like you said, what's the word that, that the Greek word for that? Uh, agape. Agape. So for the agape, for the love of humanity, one of the best things that we can do is recognize the gifts in others and then also encourage others to use those gifts and use them mm. wisely. And I think that's one of the main things that I feel inspired to do is not just through making my music, but using my music also as an, as a form of inspiration for others to also get out there and spread their truth in whatever way that they feel called to do so. But mm -hmm. going back to the, the topic of presence, I'd say, yeah, it's, it's that, it's that juice. It's that prana. It's that, it's that pure life force that comes through us when we get our ego self out of the way, the thinking mind out of the way, and we can just, mm be there to receive whatever God has in store for us or in store for greater humanity, for the agape, for the love of humanity. So, Absolutely, man. Well, one thing about the, the present moment, I'm uh, listening to some Eckhart Tolle um, lately, The Power of Now. And um, I had this audiobook sitting on my shelf for a long time. And I'd listened to some clips and interviews, but then I actually got into the book and it's all right there. You know, like there is no past. There is no future. All we have is this moment. And this is the most important moment of our life right now. And hit it here to get is right now again. You know, like it's just repetitive. We can be here. And this is why I got so much um, joy by seeing children play and learn and, and watching children. Because like you, I think you're probably a very attentive, conscious, you know, uh, curious child. And like we're we're observing the people around us and i see a five-year-old or i see an eight-year-old or something like that and i'm like that's me i remember being five or eight and just having all this like you know visions or intense you know questions and like what's going on and yeah. so i the, the children are i think the epitome of being in the present moment right like a, a five to we'll call it i don't know two to seven year old, but they're like, they're here with you right now. And they're like, well, I got to go to work and save money to do this. Or I got to you know, do this for later today. And they're like, no, now, now we got now. Exactly. And I think that, mm -hmm, yeah, there's a superpower there. And the fact that you said you were learning and practicing music at a young age, um, that's very exciting and curious to me too. So you come from a musical family or did you just like pick it up? Are you like, you know, some type of um, early starter or your, your parents put that around you? How did you get interested in music at such a young age? Yeah, I didn't, I don't come from a musical family really, but my, my parents, for whatever reason, they just decided when we were super young, myself and my sister, who's two years younger than me, they decided that we would be forced, <laughs> you know, without, <laughs> beyond our will. <laughs> so that's an, another interesting topic now now I'm very grateful at this age that I was forced, coerced, whatever you want to call it, into pursuing yeah. music for all those years. But it was just decided that that would be part of my education through the end of high school. And it kind of the, the classical piano training really ended, you know, when I went to high school. But it was something that I did from about age five on. And, um, you know, the it was such a gift because certain neural networks in the brain are extremely neuroplastic at that age and so for example there's something called absolute pitch which is and i'm not i'm not trying to say this to toot my own horn it's just something that it just i'm i'm illustrating why the power of starting children young and giving children the ability to pick up music at a young age mm -hmm. absolute pitch is the ability to hear a note and be able to recognize what that note is or hear a frequency and recognize what the frequency is or mm -hmm. to be able to sing a frequency um you know, just off of your, off of, out of thin air, right? 
and, and sing it precisely. And mm -hmm. that's something that one in 10,000 people are able to do. Mm -hmm. And in my piano training, I think every single child that was in that, that early training was able to do that by like age seven or something like that. Wow. And with, through some of my research later in life, I actually found out that most children or most people who develop that ability usually develop it before the age of seven, like the vast majority of people. So there's that time period in your early life where the, the brain is so neuroplastic and you can learn yeah. new skills, you can learn new languages extremely quickly. Bilingual, trilingual children, it's, it's typically, you know, learned before the age of 10. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just grateful to my parents that they did kind of force that on me, you know, whether that's right, right or not, that's another question. Because <laughs> there was definitely- them. We yeah, we yeah, thank them. There was times where I was like not having it, you know. I would be, yeah. you know, f studying and after school, and I hated it, and I was I was not vibing it. And fortunately, that that pushed me into other genres of music and pushed me into punk rock, where I could, you know, rebel against that a little bit, and <laughs> and then found my ways into other music forms. Um, but so that's a little answer as to why I got started early, and I think mm -hmm. the the power of of understanding, understanding the the child's mind, because the child does have such a mystical mind, right? Like what you were talking about a minute ago, you have these memories of your of your early years where you had all these questions and you had all this creativity flowing. And I feel the mm -hmm. same way. And I think that it's just the the repetitive programming that takes us out of the present moment and it constantly makes us focus on the the future and the past yeah. and regretting the past and looking towards the future or acquiring new things save up save up money so you can acquire this or yeah. or that or whatever you know the yeah. the monopoly game and all this yeah. this stuff and it doesn't really it doesn't really have any true meaning the only thing that has true meaning is being present and enjoying and feeling fulfilled in what you're doing in in this now moment and when you're able to do that consistently it creates huge amounts of change in this reality. And mm -hmm. so I think that yeah. that's, that's really all of our calling is to figure out something that we feel fulfilled doing and feel we can be really present with what we're doing and yeah. then just do it as much as possible. Just find something you enjoy and then figure mm -hmm. out how to make that useful. And if mm -hmm. more people would focus on that, if more children were taught to focus on that rather than go to this school and then go to that school and then go to that school so you can get this degree, so you can get this <laughs> job and then work your way. It's like, no. Just enjoy what you're doing and do it really well. Mm -hmm. And then all the abundance that you need will be provided to you because you'll be providing all of this value naturally to the world through whatever your inherent gifts are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. Um, one of my favorite guys is Bruce Lipton, who also like rolls around yep. with Joe, Joe D. Um, but um, he has a great quote, which is something like, you know, your body knows when you're doing something that you should be or enjoy doing. He said, it's called enth enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> like when you're feeling it and you're just like so excited, like for me, that's what I start to get to tapped into um, to break some of these chains. I went to public school as well. I got a business degree, which was almost useless. Um, I'm sure your you know, <laughs> education with the learning about the recording industry is a little bit more helpful, but business is so general. Um, um, but it's like uh, they te teach you to get a job, but it's like we, I, the, the job, what's that? A job is what somebody else gives to you. But what I want and what I think probably the listeners, are, we want a good life. And yeah. so this is a better question of like, what are we doing here? And so my definition of education is what one does to himself to create a good life. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, feel free to have any, if you have any comments on that, but it's like, um, so I went to the public school system and I had to break these chains off. And, you know, thankfully God has some plant medicine on the earth to help me break some of these chains like a psilocybin and such. And it's like, oh, so it's breaking us free of these systems, which have been literally like tattooed on our brain. And even now I'm realizing like, dude, I still got programs, but there's less of them. And I got to, yeah. you know, remember and recreate and repeat and it, now it's like conscious self-talk, conscious creation versus all the subconscious coming from the culture, coming from the music. And that's why I think you're such a, a critical and, and, and inspirational and transformational voice is when we're listening to your tunes, we're now reprogramming with ourselves, you know, the realignment song where you uh, quote Mark Passio and this is the latest songs you've done with Elias Clay, which are amazing. Um, you want to share about some of the, the, ly the lyricists or 
how you create lyrics or or that creative process because that's like people don't realize how much heart and soul one needs to put into that but when it goes on the record it's just like oh yeah it's it's uh so easy and maybe it is easy like you said the um the scamdemic song and um Freedom is ours for the taking song. I think you said those are the ones that just kind of like flow through you. But uh, maybe talk about a little bit your your writing process and um, how you get to these lyrics that um, are really visionary and I think helping us with our, our programming consciously and, and subconsciously. So how do you uh, get all these amazing words? Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I think that the, the lyrical process is something I'm still very in the early phases of, and I'm, I'm still working on a lot and, and even just opening my voice and all of that stuff is stuff that I feel like I'm in the early phases of, and I still have a long way to go. But something that has helped me out a lot uh, with that process is a tool called Rhymer's Block. And this is a tool that my, the, my former part music partner and co-founder of presence, David James, also a David James, that's a weird uh, coincidence, but shout weird, out to yeah. David because yeah. he, he turned me on to Rhymer's Block and Rhymer's Block is basically a tool that when you type in a word, it will instantly pop up the entire list of words that rhyme with that word. Mm. And so what I like to do, I don't like to rely on it too heavily, but I like to maintain my focus on whatever the message, the underlying message is that I want to get across. And then maybe I'll have one line and at the end of that line, it'll finish with a word and then with that intention of maintaining that that message there will be a list of words that pops up and then I'll just pick a word that rhymes and then just run with that for the next line mm -hmm. and that has that has really helped my writing process out a lot in terms of just like I feel like I can bang out a whole song three verses and a hook typically in a day if if it's flowing well and so that's that's kind of the lyrical process for me a little bit and and the source of the inspiration i think up until this point a lot of it has come from you know being dissatisfied being indignant being yeah. frustrated with the system and then using the lyrics as a way to alchemize my pain and mm -hmm. alchemize my own you know inner healing journey into something that's more beautiful that i can share with other people that might be relatable to other people and you know hopefully help other people with their own healing journey as well but you know for example the r's for the taking song i was on my way down to an arcapulco and i had this beat on my phone and typically i'll start with because i'm a producer first and a lyricist second mm -hmm. i'll typically i'm, I'm working on kind of you know bringing the lyrics to that that level but typically i'll have a beat or a, an instrumental track that i've been working on and then I'll just wait for that right moment for the lyrics to flow through. And so mm -hmm. I had actually just gotten kicked off of a flight because I was refusing to wear my mask on the flight. And I was in <laughs> Dallas, I was in Dallas, Fort Worth or Houston. I think it was one of the big airports in Texas. And I was on a connecting flight and I was going to Acapulco mm -hmm. and the air, the flight was all the way like a 30 minute taxi from the gate. Like we had been taxiing, taxiing, taxiing across multiple bridges mm. for, what, for whatever reason, the runway was really far from the gate. So I was kind of pushing my luck a little bit. I was like, you know, like we're really far from the gate. There's no way they're going to turn this plane around. And mm. so one of the, one of the flight attendants was kind of giving me shit. Cause I was just like keeping my stupid face muzzle underneath my chin and just <laughs> taking sips of water, you know, every oh like 10, God. 20, 30 seconds. And she's like, you need to put your mask over your nose. Mm. And I was like, no, I'm just drinking water here. You know, it's no big deal. Mm. And after a while, they just, they publicly shamed me in front of mm. the entire airplane. Yeah. <laughs> they said, there's yeah. a passenger in seat number, whatever seat I was in. And they publicly shamed me and then said, we're going to turn the plane around and, and take this passenger back to the gate. So the, the entire flight of like, you know, I don't know, 60 people was late because they, taxied out, taxied back to the gate, and then taxied back out again, probably pushing the flight an entire hour late just so that they could publicly shame me and oh, make me cool. purchase a new flight. So then when mm. I was on my new flight down to Acapulco, I was like pissed, you know? I just had mm. to pay 500 bucks out of pocket for another flight to an Acapulco. Now I'm coming out of pocket for my travel expenses. I'm all pissed oh, off, gosh. but I'm like, this is like, I don't care. Like I'm going down to be with my freedom family, you know? That's like. Right. Freedom mm -hmm. is ours for the taking, you know, mm. like we're, we're taking our freedom. Mm. We're, we're choosing to, 
it, you know, take it no matter what, because freedom isn't something that's just granted to you by some yeah. authority. It's, it's something that you yeah. have to claim. We have to claim it. And so that was kind yeah. of the thought that was running through my head. And then, you know, on that flight, two hour flight or whatever, I just, and the whole song just came out, you know? Wow. So that's kind that's of awesome. like, that's a little bit about the lyrical process. And um, yeah, again, I have to shout out my bro, David, for, um, you know, encouraging me to write more lyrics and showing me that tool rhymers block. And, you know, if there's any other people who are aspiring lyricists or vocalists or rappers or whatever, like that's definitely something I would check out. Mm, amazing. Yeah. I love how you took that energy and the word that I lo love is, is, is transmuted, right? Yeah. Because even now, dude, like I'm aware of some of this conscious stuff, but there's still the part of me. And for me, it's a school system, right? Like the school system is diabolical, intolerable, unacceptable. And when I see what's going on, even in my small little hometown of Mount Shasta, you know, this like what they got uh, three traffic signals, you know, and two grocery stores, you know, it's like yeah. they're putting the the tampons in the boys bathroom. And I'm like, what the hell is going on around here? So I still have this um, fire. And I think that's one of the gifts from God, because one of my mentors who I asked after I realize that money's not the goal in life, right? Which I was sold most of my education and indoctrination. Um, I asked him, I said, so how do you find your purpose in life? And he said, you find an injustice on the earth and you spend your life trying to correct that injustice. Yeah. And I said, oh dude, I got that. So the school system for me is one of the most unacceptable diabolical injustices. So that's probably the fire. So when you got kicked off that plane, you didn't let that anger, frustration consume you. You were able to transform, transmute it into some creative outlet. And that's something I think a lot of us could learn from. Some of the people out there um, are starting to awaken to what's going on by all these predator psychopaths. Uh, they're not elites. So if we can consider not calling them elites, I know you haven't. Uh, but these other people out there, you know, like, no, the elite people are people that love people, have compassion and forgive people, inspire, encourage people. These are the high level people. This is Bob Marley. This is Gandhi, you know, um, yeah. and some of the people who are considered voluntarists, you know, um, really inspiring people. You're one of them, Brent, you know, and there's a, there's a handful of people that it's like, oh, not only are these people talented and good hearted, but they have um, the, the message, you know, of do whatever you want. Just don't initiate harm against peaceful people or the property. Like this is the fundamental moral yeah. code. And uh, you want to talk about the song where, which is, um, well, you mentioned Passio inspired you a lot, but the song where you quote him in the lyrics, and I think that's relevant because the people that kicked you off the plane and the people who kicked me off the plane, I got kicked off the plane, I got arrested in post office for all this stuff. They're not the predators at the top. These are low level order followers. And maybe that will you know play right into Mark Passio's work who says, that order followers are the ones who perpetuate slavery. But what's another quote that you use yeah. in one of your songs? Yeah, well, one of them, I actually just finished up this track and I, I filmed the video for it in Jamaica. I had originally made the track years ago listening to Passio and then the, the instrumental got kind of outdated production wise. And then recently I was working on a beat and I was like, oh, this actually fits really well with this vocal. So I re redid that track. So, but, you know, one of the lines is a right is an action that does not cause harm to another sentient being. And he mm -hmm. says that the average person on the earth at this time cannot define what a right is. And that's why we're losing our rights, because yeah. they do not understand that a right is an action that does not cause harm or does not initiate aggression against another sentient being. Mm. And so these are the kinds of things that I'm really working on codifying and and putting into the high frequency music so that they can become more widespread knowledge because mm -hmm. these are things that children in their inherent perception of reality they actually know this to be true yeah. and i believe all humans actually know in our hearts that a right is an action that does not initiate harm to another sentient being mm -hmm. and that is you know that's really the the basis of voluntarism right it's yeah. um howard the other day posted a meme which was like a golden scale balancing two things. I don't know if you saw that meme, no, but on one side it said, do no harm. And then on the other side, it said, take no shit. So <laughs> on the left side, do no harm. <laughs> that's the non-aggression principle. And then on yeah. the right side, take no shit. That's the self-defense principle, which is right. if somebody initiates harm against you, then you mm -hmm. always have the right to defend yourself, which gets yeah. into 
you know, our right to bear arms and why that's fundamental to human freedom. Because if we allow a parasitic ruling class to be, to have the exclusive right to initiate deadly force against others, then we're setting ourselves up for a slavery system. And that's how all of the giant communist regimes have always come to power is by taking away that right from the average common man and yeah. only allowing a parasitic ruling class to maintain the right to use deadly force, right? Mm -hmm. And even now, you know, it's like if you use deadly force against an aggressive cop who was trying to, you know, write you a, a traffic citation, you know, basically the implied, when someone, when even as something as simple as a traffic stop, right? Mm -hmm. The implied, the implied aggression there, the implied duress that you're under when you're under a traffic stop is if you don't stop right now or if you don't pay this ticket or this fine or this extortion fee you're going to be you know probably locked up or or worse shot yep. and killed yep. that is the implied use of force or the implied mm -hmm. aggression mm -hmm. and so in this in this world that we're living in right now we have to be wise about how we do use that right to self defense because even though we do have that right against the ruling class it's not going to become a actual, how do you say, it's not going to become a viable right until enough people in mass exercise it. Yeah. And so anyways, just kind of getting back to the natural law stuff and, and Mark Passio and stuff like that. Yeah. I think that's the fundamental, the fundamental principle of my music is figuring out how to share a message of natural law with mixed with, you know, high vibrational knowledge, sacred knowledge of how we can uh, level up our frequency, live in more abundance, live in more peace, live in more harmony with, with those around us, live in more creativity. But at its core, we don't have the freedom to actually live in peace and harmony and creativity if we don't understand what a right is, right? right. And yeah. so that's kind of the fundamental thing that I'm working on getting across is, is teaching that through the music. And, you know, that's what Passio says that he's working on is inspiring as many other people as possible to become teachers of natural law so that we can explain and educate these extremely simple principles of do no harm, do not initiate harm, take no shit. You have the right to defend yourself if someone else initiates harm against you. We have these very fundamental simple principles that you live by, I live by as much as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And the more people can understand these principles, mm. the more we live by principles, the more we live in alignment with natural law, the more that freedom increases in the aggregate. And that's what Passio calls the law of freedom is as morality increases in the collective, as we do more moral actions and don't initiate harm against others, then freedom also increases. It has to because there's less coercion, there's less violence, and therefore there can be more freedom. There's more room for freedom in society. So mm. that's, that's really the fundamental thing. If there's one thing that's inspiring all my music behind all of the lyrics and you know some of these really fast bars that I'm spitting, behind yeah. all of that is the most simple principles of do not initiate harm against others, right? It's, it's really simple. So, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. I'm grateful to Passio for kind of codifying some of these, some of these things and explaining them in a way that at least to me makes a whole lot of sense. And I know there's other teachers out there. Howard's a great teacher of this stuff. You're a great teacher of this stuff. There's lots mm -hmm. of great teachers Thank of you. this stuff out there. And the mm -hmm. more teachers of this, there are, the more we can live in alignment with these fundamental principles and move into higher levels of freedom in the aggregate mm -hmm. to where we have the ability to have, for example, free energy technologies, which have been black shelved and suppressed since the early 1900s and probably before yeah. that, right? Yep. Technologies that would allow you to go in and any health issue that you might have, whether it's something really small to a broken bone, to a cancer, to a skin issue, you could just go and lie in a bed for 30 minutes and have complete physical restoration of your life force and your bodily function, right? Or have energy technology that would allow something like this size to power an entire home or potentially even an entire neighborhood or, or entire city, yep. you know, where we could be flying around in ships where we have all of our food growing in beautiful gardens inside an indoor ship that can dematerialize and fly halfway across the realm and we can go around and travel and have complete 
freedom and autonomy to do whatever the fuck we want, whenever the fuck we want, excuse my language, but yeah. the stuff that I'm passionate about, this is why freedom is, it matters That's because right. without the freedom, without us defending our freedom and taking our freedom, then mm. these technologies and these superhuman mystical abilities that humans do have innately and that we've forgotten about, if we start to take back our freedom, then we can also take back the access, which is our birthright to have technologies that would allow us to live in perfect harmony with mother nature and mm. to be able to actually, you know, cities, you know, there's talk about the ancient cities of Atlantis and Lemuria where, where cities were actually just levitating. And mm. if we could actually move our ourselves completely off of the surface of the earth and be levitating and flying around, then all of the beautiful life forms that are here on the earth would actually be able to restore themselves to perfect harmony and all the jungles would be able to restore themselves because we're not wow. down here hacking away on the surface of the earth, trying to take different things and burn this and, you know, dump plastic in the ocean and all the stuff that we're doing that, to destroy the environment, you yeah. know, and along that topic, you know, they want to continue pushing the mind control in the direction of, oh, there's uh, <clears throat> this, this elusive thing of, climate change you know and they want to lump <laughs> all of the environmentalists into climate change you know which yeah. they can't even they have no evidence that this is even actually exists <laughs> at all it's just this <laughs> this this blanket term to describe all the environmental problems that we face and then blame it on humans and make us mm. hate ourselves for causing yeah. the environmental harm when in mm. reality it's our lack of understanding of natural law that's causing the environmental harm yeah. It's the it's the giant cartels that are in cahoots with the government, you know, using force, deadly force to force their environmentally toxic ways on the rest of the people who have no ability to defend themselves. When a government wants to go into Afghanistan and take all the poppy fields and take all the oil and uses an entire military to just take down a government's leadership so that mm. they can go in there and, and, and take whatever resources they want through a cartel. That's what a cartel is, mm. right? But through our understanding of morality and natural law, we can take back all of the technologies that would allow us to live in perfect harmony with the earth and have a mm. much larger, much more thriving population you know, and be able to build buildings that would actually last for eternity, you know, and that's why some of these buildings that are still alive today, I'm going to, I'm going to stop rambling here in a second. I know I'm going off right now, but it's one beautiful. of the things I've been studying with my, with my partner, Jen, is this idea of Tartaria. Is this something you've looked into? Yeah, it looks like there was a previous civilization, but go ahead. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's like, this is one of the things is it's very obvious now to me that there was a previous advanced civilization, but it wasn't 4,000, 8,000, 12,000 years ago, probably back then as well. But the advanced mm -hmm. civilization was as recently as like the early 1900s or the mid 1800s yeah. that we had advanced technology, right? Mm -hmm. And what are, what is the real purpose of all these giant wars, World War One, World War Two? We don't even actually really know the history of it because history is a lie that's agreed upon, right? Mm -hmm. right. And so we don't actually know the reason for these wars, but in my opinion now, the purpose of them was to suppress technology limit you know coal the earth's population and bomb carpet bomb as many of these ancient buildings and cities as we possibly could yeah. to remove them and traumatize the human experience into forgetting about the past that was so recent right yeah. if we can forget about a past you know maybe three generations ago where we had access to advanced technology that would allow us to have infinite energy fly around the earth in a matter of seconds and restore mm -hmm. ultimate health and vitality to any human being in a matter of seconds. If we remembered that we had access to that technology, like not 10, 15 generations ago, but maybe two or three generations ago, if we remember mm -hmm. that, if we collectively wake up to that, that could be one of the most powerful revelations because we would realize, oh, wow, we've just let this parasitic ruling class, uh, you know, take all of this technology away. And as, as Larkin Rose shows in the tiny dot, there's so many more of us than there are oh. of them. And oh, all yeah. it requires is for us to just collectively wake up. And as soon as we do that, we just flip the game board over and it's all, it's, it's all over. Right. So that's what I, that's where I think we're getting to. And, mm -hmm. and the study of all these things like Tartaria and ancient technology and, you know, the pyramids and stuff like that. It's, 
it's, it's enlightening because it reminds us of our true potential. It reminds mm-hmm. us that we could lift 200 ton blocks of stone with probably our singing voice, you know, mm. you yeah, know, not, like, not with heavy machinery, not with slaves and logs and vine roasts, but with, or some kind of frequency, we could probably lift these massive stones and move them from a quarry miles and miles away and create pyramids that are perfectly aligned with the earth's yeah. electromagnetic fields and create giant resonating temples that allow us to time travel and, and have magnificent capabilities. And that's what I think mm. the capabilities of humanity truly are. So, right. No, great, great words, brother. Um, a couple things there. One is the energy thing. And I want to just give so the audience some resources because um, part of being educated and visionary people as you are, Grant, and the listeners here, like we're the ones we wait for, guys. Like there's nobody at the top who's going to save us. It's us to put these things together. You can tell Grant did a lot of research. There's a documentary called The Lost Century by Dr. Stephen Greer. And he goes through 100 years, the last 100 years, like you said, of all these technologies that have been black shelf, patented, you know, destroyed because the oil cartel – if if we have these free energy devices, which I think is inevitable, hopefully in our lifetime for the, the each individual home, then we don't need their their coal plants. We don't need their um, their oil and all these things which they are siphoning off of us and we're trading our life for money. Um, and so we would have all this leisure time that we can build and create. So he shows all these technologies and then in Foster Gamble's Thrive 2, he shows yeah. another technology in there uh, from Africa, and it's amazing. He also mentions voluntarism as well. So these types of ideas are starting to rise, and um, I think for the people at the highest levels that are the fake celebrities, artists, etc., I think they're starting to feel the house of cards is falling with 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 uh, beneath them, and the new people are rising. So for the people out there, understand where we are in history. Like this is well aptly said. Freedom is ours for the taking. Yes, creator source gave us our energy, our freedom at birth, but it's up to us to go and get it. You know, like we can get a membership to the gym, but we ain't going to get a six pack and get buff. We actually got to go do the work. We got to go take the six pack, take the, the, the deadlift or whatever type of lift that you're doing and do it for yourself. So this is, I think, where we're at is a very exciting time in history that, uh, you know, Grant and I can have this conversation without permission from anybody. Um, and we're coming to the top of the hour, brother. So I, there, I, there, we could go on for hours, and I think we should yeah. do this an- another time. Um, what is your take on the censorship that maybe you've experienced um, getting your song, your hottest song deleted off Spotify and um, any other platforms or solutions that you might have here um, maybe in the last five or 10 minutes? Yeah, the censorship is definitely a real thing. Uh, My song Scam that I wrote during COVID, which called out the scam of the COVID and the scams of governments and all that, that got deleted off of Spotify within one week of me releasing it. I don't know if that was because somebody reported it. There was couple people in my life who were super, super, super triggered by that song and, and, and started sending me hate mail every day. And maybe one yeah. of them reported it to Spotify. But regardless, mm. I mean, just because somebody reports something doesn't mean this giant music platform should have the right to take it down, in my opinion. Mm. But, you know, all of these giant platforms that have a monopoly on so much of the content that people are consuming, yeah, I think it's upon us. We have to take it upon ourselves. And this is something that I need to really work on is, you know, working on, I was talking to Dave before we went live about, you know, multi-streaming, which is the ability to stream to multiple Mm -hmm. platforms at the same time. So I could be streaming to YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, all of the, you know, big daddy mommy owned platforms, but then also be streaming to DLive at the same time, which is decentralized and be finding Mm -hmm. other outlets for the media. And that's something that I really need to be working on more and more. Um, If there's anybody out there, by the way, who you know, has good media skills and wants to just help me with my social media as far as pushing content out to more platforms. I know, you know, big voices like Max Egan have people like that who help them to just, you know, push their content out to a lot of platforms and repost stuff. That's something I'm working on. So I think we just have to, like you said, we have to take it. We have to take it upon ourselves to, to use what's out there. And I think Examples like BitChute, beautiful example, yeah. you know, Max, Max Egan, a friend of mine just passed 100,000 subscribers on BitChute. I mean, that's wow. a big deal. That's a lot yeah. of people who yeah, are watching is. his content on a platform that 
just a few years ago didn't even exist. And yeah. it was born completely out of necessity because of how all of the, the mainstream platforms were taking down large numbers of creators to the mm -hmm. point where I... Almost every single person I subscribed to on YouTube a few years ago was completely removed from the platform. And so wow. now we've been forced to, to migrate to other things like BitChute and Odyssey and, and other decentralized options that are not censored. Mm -hmm. And I think that's beautiful. And the more of us who get over there and start pushing content out there, like if I go on BitChute, it's way more interesting stuff than what I'm going to see on YouTube. Like YouTube just feeds like my my stupid, you know, obsession with cars and, and, you know, <laughs> mindless stuff that doesn't really elevate, elevate my life in a real way. But when I go on bit shoot, I'm being, you know, surrounded by amazing information that's world changing information. So mm. I think we just have to opt out, uh, you know, or at least be using multiple platforms simultaneously to the best of our ability um, mm. to get past the censorship. And I think the censorship is just proof that they know they're losing the battle, you know, yeah. because if they were winning the battle, you know, they wouldn't care. They would just be like, ah, whatever, leave it up. You know, I think that's why they've left certain topics up on YouTube and taken down others because they know that, you know, there's just not enough people who are engaging with that material for it to be a re legitimate threat to their authority. But when mm -hmm. they realize that there's a legitimate threat to their authority, then they go and start <laughs> taking people down and start censoring stuff. Yeah. And so I think it shows when we do get censored, it's, it's a reminder that we're over the target. Mm -hmm. I just met a painter. I'll keep this short, but I just met a really cool graffiti artist um, in Kingston at the Kingston Dub Club. And he, he paints murals. They're like graffiti murals, but he gets permission to paint them. And a lot of times they get painted over within 24 hours of him painting the mural a lot wow. of times because they're just powerful and they speak a message of truth and people yeah. realize, Oh man, you know, that's, that's too truthful. We can't let that stay up or people might revolt against the local government or, or, or whatever. So mm -hmm. that's my piece on censorship. I think that mm -hmm. the more we continue to uplift independent creators, independent platforms, going and subscribing to people's individual websites, like David Icke has his own website, iconic media, uh, you know, there's plenty of examples of independent creators in the alternative media who are creating their own platforms and allowing you to subscribe to them directly. And then also these third party decentralized platforms, I think, are a really good option as well. So that's what I'm working on more of myself personally is pushing content out to, you know, not just Instagram because it's all pay to play, you know, feed the algorithm. If you feed the algorithm, you get views. If if you don't, then you don't. So. Mm -hmm. That's kind of that's kind of where I think we're at. So should we leave it yeah. with a couple songs for the audience, and then we'll, I know we got to get going here pretty soon. Yes, yes. Let's uh, let me make one last comment here because there's, there's so much, dude. I, okay, so yeah, um, new platforms. What I heard is the there's a group of technology companies that are captured and some ones that are not. I think BitChute, Odyssey. I forgot about D Live as well. And so for some of the technologists out there, you know, put the some of these um, solutions in the comments here and or reach out to Grant or myself or whatever. But we're on the winning team. That's what I want to emphasize. We're on the winning team. And now it's just a matter of getting more people, getting the message out there, changing our habits, changing our beliefs and, and actually working on our inner man, our inner woman out there for the ladies, um, because there's nothing outside of us. It's all with inside of us. And the the callback to the thing about the children was that I believe every child's a born genius. So Grant has his gifts. I have mine, but you have yours, listener. And there's so many types of intelligences. So it's a matter of finding out how you can participate in the great self-ownership awakening. And I don't think it's a revolution. It's an evolution of consciousness, of self-knowledge and self-growth, self-love and collaboration and community. And so I just want to emphasize that there as we um, go out here and um, yeah, play is, uh, yeah, maybe we got a few minutes here and to share whatever you, man, I, so much, dude, we got to come back, <laughs> but go yeah, ahead we'll and wrap up again. everyone. Yeah. Comment down below. Make sure you subscribe, comment, like, share this with, with everyone. Dave, Dave is also working on expanding his platforms out. And the more that we just share this knowledge and spread this out far and wide, the better for, for everyone. So, yeah, dude, thanks so much for having me on today. And I, I think we're, we're so on the same page about so many things. And so grateful to, to have you as an ally in this, in this freedom battle. So. I'm going to yeah, play so your favorite we, song here and we'll, okay, we'll take okay, it so out. Okay, so before we take it out, so where can people find you? And then um, and then we'll let you uh, kind of close this episode. 
Yeah, so all of my music is available at my website. It's presencemusic.com, spelled P-R-E-Z-E-N-C-E. So you can think of it like the Zen, Z-E-N, in presence, P-R-E-Z-E-N-C-E, music.com. And it's all there for free. Just share it, like it, subscribe, push it out to as many people as possible. I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing it for the love of humanity. I forgot the word again. What's the word? Agape love. Agape. Doing it for agape. So yeah, me too, brother. We're gonna we're gonna take it out with a song. This is Dave's favorite song right here. I hope you yeah. guys enjoy. My camera is about to die. Let's hope that it survives. Eyes for the day. Uh huh. Okay. You know what? History now in the making, I say. Oh, fuck the government, I'll go Piero. No, they only exist to take your money and your dinero. I ain't scared of nothing, I ain't moving, I ain't budging. A lot of population trusting to the bullshit we be cutting. Assess the situation if you want liberation. No disinformation, pollute your clear mind. Some be caught up in the lies, must be all the fluoride. Nighty night, keeping them mindless, spineless, fine with it. I got no time for this. Taking a trip into the future, no master, no slave. Gonna be living with our rulers by any measure. We maneuver, no jabbing, no boost. Like Cause we lost them and recruiters and we villain prosecutors, hey. History now in the making. Freedom is ours for the taking, yes. History now in the making. Freedom is ours for the taking, yes. History now in the making. Freedom is ours for the taking. History now in the making, I say. Uh -huh. Ayo, I love to see me brethren standing up to tyranny The sound of freedom resonating like a symphony We ain't no fringe minority A threat to authority when we come and together Out of the asylum majority to see Most people don't wanna rock the boat They're afraid to go against the grain And the system keeps them broke So they comply, comply till our freedoms implode Wondering how they became the fascist at the end of the road Let's go, uh-huh History now in the making Freedom is ours for the taking I say, history now now in the making, freedom is ours for the taking, yes. History now in the making, freedom is ours for the taking. History now in the making, I say. Because collective consciousness rising, the truth is so inspiring when we shine Enter this high state of mind, you know mankind is intelligently designed In love with this beautiful life, humanity living and breathing a thrive When we step into what is aligned, Hey, My people ready to rise up Let's move into the new paradigm, yes And break the chains of the past Ascend into the greater future, yes History now in the making Freedom is ours for the taking, I say. History now in the making. Freedom is ours for the taking. History now in the making. Freedom is ours for the taking. History now in the making. Uh huh, okay, uh huh. History now in the making. Freedom is ours for the taking. History now in the making. Freedom ours for the taking. History now in the making. Freedom is ours for the taking. History now in the making. Yes, it's ours for the taking. Yeah. Woo! The anthem, my brothers and sisters. Thank you, Grant. Thank you for listeners. We are building a world based on consent, self ownership, and freedom. It is inevitable. There will be a voluntary world, hopefully in our lifetime. And uh, either way, it will happen for. The children and the grandchildren. So thank you, Grant, for being here. Much love and respect, brother. We'll see you on the next episode of Voluntary Living. Peace and love.